hello, welcome back to Underrated Movies. I'm your guy, I'm your man, Mr. Alton Henry, and today I'd like to talk to you of another film that I think is severely underrated and will no longer be relevant once they are introduced into the bigger universe, which is the MCU. Today I'm talking about, in case you didn't notice, what's behind me back there is X-Men Days of Future Past, starring Hugh Jackman and a uh, the, the girl who played Rogue. But this time I'm going to talk about the Rogue Cut version. The original version that was supposedly been advertised, was supposed to be released, but they cut it out for whatever reason. Well, just because, uh, well, yeah. And the reason why I want to talk about the Rogue Cut. I think it's a little bit better than the original. There's more to it than that, but does it really affect the overall story? Not necessarily. Basically, the story, for those who don't know, is about set in the future where mutants are close to being extinct, hunted by these organic robotic sentinels, and the last remaining survivors of the X-Men must travel back through time to 1973 to convince the older generation to stop a certain madman from ever, ever, ever developing the Sentinel project. Well, they send Wolverine back. And what I really liked about this film is that it's a, well, it's not only a superhero film, but it's also a time travel post-apocalyptic film. And I think it's done superb, directed by Brian Singer. What I really, really thought was interesting about this film is that given that Hugh Jackman, who no longer is Wolverine as we know, is kind of not really the main focus of the story. He's the character that is given the mission. But when he goes back through time, he's basically taken aback a bit where he's kind of like, his, his goal is basically just to get the original X-Men, the first class X-Men together to get them to join forces with Magneto and stop Trask to, you know, stop them from preventing, uh, from creating these Sentinels. And, and I like that his character really took a back seat because it was more about the original X-Men characters, the, uh, the uh, first class, recovering from their incident from the, from the uh, first class film and trying to band together, healing old wounds, and trying to amend some to work together and create a better future for themselves. Most particularly, um, uh, James McAvoy's uh, Professor Xavier, he's kind of like the heart of the film where it's kind of really him and, and Mystique. I feel like really him and Mystique are really the main stars of this film because they're really the, meat, uh, the, the main key points. Oh, it changes this film where we're, oh, well, well, well what resolves um, the conclusion to the film. Hugh Jackman, he's cool as Wolverine. I think this is my favorite film of him really being in it next to Logan. Uh, and I like that his character really takes on a mentor um, role where he's in reverse or trying to teach uh, Professor Xavier to really... Um, you know, to, to, to restore his hope uh, to, uh, you know, when it comes to, um, you know, the doomsday future. And I really liked it. He he, he tries his best to, to kind of do it in his own way. And it's actually kind of funny at times, but really, he's kind of really the, I guess, I guess plot point or just kind of the key to kind of get Professor Xavier to the changes to inspire him to to stop Raven from pop, from killing um, this guy Trask from preventing the idea of continuing these Sentinels, and um, really, I thought this film was was phenomenal. Like the rogue scenes, the rogue scenes. Really, her scenes in there doesn't really impact the overall story, but it's nice to have them in there. And what I mean by that, because she has a cameo in the original cut, 
Um, this one, she has more of a role where she's basically, for, for those who don't know, then and the extent has been out for a while now. And wow, the movie is almost a decade old. Um, really, it's there's a scene in there where um, I forgot her, I forgot the character's name, but um, the girl, the, the the character that can walk through 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 walls, she she's the one is able to send uh, Wolverine's uh, mind back in time, and um, when she does that, she gets wounded. Um, certain point in the film, and then uh, Iceman is convinced that they need to go to go back to the um, X Men um, mansion, Xavier's mansion, to uh, to rescue Rogue, who's been supposedly held captive, and they, his and their place has been taken over. So they go there, rescue her, and there's some alternate scenes that take place that. Happens and for spoiler for, for spoilers who don't know, Iceman unfortunately does die, and she takes over uh, um, Elliot Page's powers and resumes the the mission of having Logan remaining back in the past. And I kind of like that they kind of kept going back and forth to that. You know? But once they're in the past, the, the main focus is when they're in the past. So. The original actors who were been in the X Men for over two decades really take a back seat after they're after after they're basically introduced. And the designs, I love the designs of the Sentinels. The Sentinels were, were cool, and I hope really in um, you know they're really cool. I mean, they're, they're cool designs. I like the I like the past Sentinels um, look to it and. Um, than the uh, future one. Uh, I really like the action scenes. The action sequences were really cool. They were really intense, um, especially uh, the future sequences when they're fighting the Sentinels. And it really, and I really love the intensity when it came to some of these Sentinels overpowering the X Men, and it really grips you at the edge of your seat. Like I really love Brian Singer's direction when it comes to when he directs these X Men films. I love it that he brings it to a a grounded um, way of uh, how these characters use their powers. It's not like head on, like action, action, action. I like how they, he uses, he tries to really figure out what's the best way to uh, get these characters to use their abilities in a very, in a much more realistic um, way. Um, and in the road code, there are some alternate scenes. There's one particular scene that kind of may not have worked for me, but I liked it regardless. It's the um, scene where it takes place right after the assassination attempt on a uh, on Trask, and uh, Mystique comes in, returns to the um, X Men mansion, and he, she, and then Beast spend a little time together, and then they have a little romantic moment to kind of just just for them to kind of relate. You know, just to have their their time together. Then she ends up sneaking her way down to um, Cerebro and destroys it. Then she leaves. Now I don't know about that. I thought I mean I thought it was a cool, interesting scene, but I just I felt I, I kind of understood why they took that scene out. It just felt like why would she want to return? And then go back out to, you know, to continue her mission to assassinate Trask. Like, it just, like, it didn't really make a whole lot of sense, but I kind of did like the scene there. Uh, what I also really liked is that there were some different takes from the original. I actually liked that. I like when there are alternate versions of a film where there are certain scenes in there from the original scene where um, it's in the battle sequence, the last battle sequences, where... Uh, Beast asks Wolverine, like, hey, in the future, do I make it? And he says no, during the moment of the battle. That moment actually takes place earlier, right before the battle at the X-Men mansion, where uh, Wolverine is basically just chilling out, relaxing, preparing for the um, for the final battle. And Beast literally asks him that, but 
it's just in a different setting. Um, there's another alternate scene um, that I would say uh, it's been a while since I've seen the film. And there are a few little alternate scenes where Wolverine first wakes up in the past and he sees, um, there's really alternate, just, I wouldn't say alternate, like extended and alternate shots of him fighting those three guys that shot at him in that little, I guess, hotel or whatever he's at when he's trying to, when he's you know, with that girl. A few little snippets and a few little alternate scenes. And there's a few little alternate scenes here there for throughout for the rest of the film, but really, um, it's really the same film. And I think this one's a little bit better because it gave some of the original characters a little bit more to do, but it still doesn't really have a big impact infecting the overall story of the film. I actually think this is one of the best <clears throat> superhero films I've ever seen, and I think it's underrated because it's this is before really the Avengers when Avengers Endgame were, you know, you have a group of superheroes go back in time to stop a bigger event. And I think this is, this is one of the first, I think, superhero films that really did that. And really, I think everybody's really going to forget about these films once they're included into the MCU. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. You know, this may not be the most accurate um, portrayal of the X-Men, and honestly, I'm not much, I mean, I'm, I'm not much, I don't know much about the, um, the accurate, um, characters from the X-Men. You know, I, I grew up watching the movies, I've learned a little bit about it, I've watched the shows, my brother introduced me to a lot of its properties, but I'm not, I'm not an expert in knowing it, really anything about every character, and in fact, I, you know, I should look that up. But I think it's underrated because it, it is one of the first superhero time travel films. And I think out of all the X-Men, excluding Logan, I think just as an X-Men film, I think it's the best one. And I don't think it's given a lot of um, credit for, for being for what it was. I think X-Men 2 still... From what, what my understanding, I think X-Men 2 still gets a lot of recognition over X-Men Days of Future Past. And X-Men Apocalypse gets crapped on too, but I'll talk about that in another video, and I think that one's a little underrated too. The visual effects in this film is, are, are phenomenal. Um, though, looking at the, um, I guess the digital, it was kind of, it took a little bit of time to kind of get into the digital look of the film with visual effects. It just felt, it felt a little weird. It just felt a little weird, but it was, it was really, it was really great. The film was really great overall. Um, I really love the final battle sequence in the um, 1972 or 73, where, at, where they're at the stadium at the uh, um, president introducing the um, of Sentinels, and I thought that was a really good uh, sequence there, and uh, I actually like it that there were certain moments where it subverted my expectations of what was going to happen in the film, and when it did happen, you didn't get it, and I thought it was actually kind of cool, where you're constantly being surprised what you think you're going to get, but something else happens in the film, and you're kind of you're kind of just curious, and you're, you're, you're really kind of gripped on suspense, like, okay, where is this going to go next? And you really want to know. I really like that. Like it, like I remember that. This is a spoiler for those who haven't seen the film. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. It's on Disney Plus for those who don't know. Um, there's a scene in there in that final battle sequence. Logan sees Magneto. He charges at him, and Magneto just stares at him, just throwing metal objects at him left and right. Then he gets a a bunch of like. A bar stuck to like some concrete and then takes him down. He uses the bars from the concrete to wrap him around and pin him down and lifts him up and says, So much for being a survivor and sends his ass out of the stadium and he's done. <laughs> he is done for the rest of the film and you don't see him again. <laughs> well, until he snaps out of it. 
until he goes back to the future. But after that, it's it's like, wow, Logan didn't really do much except changing or giving Professor Xavier that hope that we've that he, the character, uh, used to be you know used to be that 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 that, that figure of hope. So he's done his job in the film, but when that happened, I was surprised. I was surprised. It was it was actually kind of funny, but knowing Logan, I guess I guess he's a little hard headed and kind of an animal. I thought that scene. I thought that was just shocking. I thought that was really shocking. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> oh man! But let me know in your comments below if you've seen X Men: Days of Future Past. Why do you think it's underrated? I think it's 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 a masterpiece of superhero and just action adventure, just film. It's it doesn't get a lot of you know it doesn't get a lot of talked about. The movie's almost a decade old now. Believe it or not, wow. Like wow. Like it. Like wow. Like once they yeah once they come into the MCU, it, 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 everybody's gonna forget about this, but. Comment below, let me know, like, subscribe. If you have seen it, let me know what you think about the X-Men, Days of Future Past, and just Brian Seeger's take on it. And uh, let me know, and I'll see you in my next video. And what is your favorite underrated movie?